Ah, folks. Seems there's a lot of confusion out there these days. The world is a scary place. That's why I don't go it alone. I get my draft advice straight from the horse's mouth. I use the Fantasy Footballer's Ultimate Draft Kit. It's chock full of all kinds of stuff like premium rankings, sleepers, values, breakouts, and of course my favorite, handcuffs. So don't find yourself stranded all alone, shaking and afraid. Go to www.ultimatedraftkit.com and get yourself a roadmap to a fantasy championship. <laughs> Y'all! What up? This is the Chucker from Cincinnati repping CFFL Dynasty, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Especially you, Chucker. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that got me good, man. I'm all hyped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back again. If you're not aware, sometimes the Foot Clan introduces the show, and uh, only Brooks is privy to the introduction beforehand. Sometimes it startles us. I thought the Chucker might have been running a uh, a shock jock radio (laughs) station. (laughs) Hey, it's the Chucker from KLFR. That was fantastic. Well done. (laughs) Well done. All right, welcome into a sh- uh, show. Welcome into a show. <laughs> We've got uh, we just got back from Chicago, which is in and of itself an accomplishment. We did it. Uh, now we it, it, we came in in pieces. Brooks, uh, Jason was first. Uh, he left early to uh, to see my son's musical performance. He was in in the morning back in Arizona, and. Uh, my flight was the smoothest, so thankfully I just missed it. Yes, that is not thanks, a lie. Thanks for the delay. Was feeling bad for him. Then we got canceled. Then Brooks came back secondly. Um, he only had to do like a six-hour layover at midnight in another city to get back. And then we eventually got back. So has it worn off, Mike? Has the um, I'm good, man. I'm ready to go. Yeah. In fact, I'm so ready to go. I'll be getting on a plane today. That's right. To go to New York. That's right. We'll be in New York at Gramercy Theater on Saturday. Ballerslive.com. There, and which, by the way, very few seats left. What if did you we hear? Seven floor seats? Seven e- seats somewhere? Those around? are probably gone. But if if you're one of those people that, oh, I'm just, I'll am just i set an alarm. I'll remind myself at the last second. This is your alarm. This is your alarm. <laughs> be there. It's going to be great. Today's show, we got a mock draft. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're doing a full PPR mock draft on today's episode. Have some fantasy football news and notes to bring to you. A good quick question. You can follow us, as always, on Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. If you're hey. not, head over to YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell. We're also on Instagram. And the community of fantasy football players is over at jointhefoot.com. You get the extra episode, access to Foot Clan Leagues, and all of that. So, uh, quick question of the day, Jason, Mike. What are your thoughts on leagues that have a point per carry format? Well, I, I think a, a point. F- yeah, I was yeah. gonna say I, I think a full point per carry is far too much. I mean, you're going to really skew things towards running backs in, in a heavy manner. I do, however, think so. Like, you know, we're we're generally speaking half point PPR fellas around here full point better than standard but I like half point the best because once you get to the flex players it really is kind of even between wide receivers and running backs if you get to the deeper flex options then it's still wide receivers and PPR those flex it's usually better to have a wide receiver um in the point per carry if you give like 0.1 point per carry or something like which that, which we do in in our league of record we do give 0.1 per carry that that really helps even out those deeper flex players because those those last guys, I mean, you know, they're they're not getting Zeke type right. carries. Yeah, it, I, I like it. I'm with Jason that it just it gives some of those lower tier guys. It's it's trying to find a way to to add value to them, and then you the the bonus. I don't think this is a reason to completely do this, but I have seen more than my share of the heartbreaking loss of. 
the quarterback kneels out the ball, <laughs> which is a rushing attempt, which is minus one, which is minus point one. So it, it does seem to balance that out. I remember a time when you had so many more workhorse backs. I don't want my league being ruled by Derrick Henry. Right. I don't think. Um, we're in an NFL now where it's kind of been neat over the past few years to see fantasy teams that miss out on top-tier running backs have the ability to win weeks with an Austin Eckler if they make the right start and decisions right. like that that are more difficult if the PPR format isn't, in, you know, if you have the carry uh, point per carry, you're just going to be so heavily leaning on those guys. Um, yeah, it full, the last thing I'll say, a full point per carry, it just makes those – uh, the already most valuable player, which is like last year, Todd Gurley. But, I mean, those were Zeke, Christian McCaffrey. It just takes them to a, a whole new stratosphere where if you don't have a, a top six pick. Yeah, good luck. And, yeah. and that's really the issue Rough. is that we know who those players are going to be, and there's not a lot of them. So if you get – like what we're doing today on the draft in the PPR mock, we're giving ourselves pretty much the hardest – what I think is the hardest spot to draft – the more that the season has gone along, I really don't like drafting from like around the 10 spot. That's where we're going today. Yeah, we're going to. And if we were in a point per carry league, we, we lost. <laughs> I mean, it's how it feels right. because you don't get one of those top elite full point per carry running backs. It would be interesting for some of the wide outs that get a consistent two or three carry attempts a, a game. Yeah. They'd get a little bump. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. We'll start with some news, uh, footballers' news, because we wanted to make sure that our our show podcast schedule was out there. If you're new and joining the show right now, we're two times a week. Yeah, but in July, which is by the way next week, we bump that to three shows a week in July. And then we are five episodes a week from August through December. The season is somehow, some way, inching closer. Jason. As the cowboy would say. Yes, the cowboy would say that. That's all they said. Um, but that's exciting. We've got new, more shows coming up. So uh, next week, starting with uh, what the Chicago or the New York live show, Brooks. When does that go? Up for the listener. Tuesday, right? Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be able to hear that if you're not in attendance, of course. All right, Bengals, first round draft pick. This is a tough one. Ugh. Their left tackle, Jonah Williams, is likely to miss the entire 2019 season. Yes, he's a rookie, but yes, we saw the impact on the offensive line in Cincinnati with that Andrew Whitworth when Andy Dalton struggled. Joe Mixon, you were looking forward to this new yes. piece on the offense, weren't you? Yeah, and they, and they had moved their previous left tackle that wasn't that great, but two guard to actually bolster that position. So this is kind of hurting two positions here with the loss of the uh, of Jonah Williams. And, and, you know, so the question, especially, I mean, like today, right, we're going to be on the clock in a situation where I'm really tempted to, uh, if he falls there, take like a Joe Mixon. But does does the news of the left tackle – going down how much does that affect Joe Mixon because that obviously is going to uh, you know your your offensive line factors in huge to the running back do you change nothing or do you change a lot well I think we were all looking for Mixon to take a step forward regardless yes we weren't just looking at it like okay drafting a left tackle in the first round that's his avenue to to, to moving forward but it, you know you got a new head coach you've got a new offensive system I you know I don't know I don't. I don't think I factor it a ton. Yeah, I'll take a look. I. I don't think it would move him down too much, but it. It definitely can help you make a tie-breaking decision when these type of injuries happen. Yeah, I. I did bump him down a slight hair. Um, just the slightest. Just the slightest, but it did. Teeny it did. Move, it did move him. He. He. Before this was behind David Johnson in my rankings in half point PPR. He or he was ahead of him. Now he's behind. All right, if you listen to the Chicago show, you heard uh, some Sony Michelle remarks from a one Jason Moore. You felt the shade. Yeah, well, NFL Network's Mike uh, Giardi reporting that Sony Michelle is running at, quote, full tilt, which I thought That's you were supposed to run straight 
up yeah, and down. Full but tilt. this is great. Uh, as one knee is, you know, oh, has a problem, okay. so he's running full tilt. 45 uh-huh. degrees over. I've never heard of full tilt being a good thing. I, I've definitely heard it, yeah. but it's oh, just yeah. it's a strange thing, especially considering how the fantasy community, we have fully embraced the the concept of tilting. Tilting is, is very negative. Which is what you will be doing when your second consecutive <laughs> New England Patriots prediction fails you this year, Jason. <laughs> I am a believer in You'll Damian Harris. You'll be in, Harris. quote, full tilt at that time. <laughs> Chiefs wide receiver. I'm tilting at full tilt. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to get into it. I have more thoughts on Sonny Michelle. Sure. Um, but, look, if Damian Williams earns himself a role, that'd be nice. Damian Williams will have a role. Sorry, Damian Harris sorry, will Damian also Harris. have a role. Uh, Chiefs wide receiver Tyree Kill. There's some news. He had been banned from attending the team's training facility. He was scheduled to meet with the NFL officials in Kansas City this past week. And the Chiefs believe that the Hill suspension could basically come as soon as next month. If you are focusing entirely on the fantasy picture, the sooner you get information about something like this, the better for all parties involved. If you're the Sammy Watkins, Mecole Hardman, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey. Well, maybe not Kelsey. That one probably doesn't matter. But it, It's Mecole. It, uh, to me, even the Sammy Watkins, what he could be, the, the biggest the biggest change in stats is Mikael Harmon. Like the three of us right now, because every, things were trending that Hill is – I mean, he's suspended. The team doesn't want him around. Like this felt like Tyreek Hill possibly will not play this year. I mean, that would be a dramatic change to the way that things are statted out. Yeah, in, you, in you go from Mikael Hardman having that role – Potential breakout as a rookie. Might not be able to get on the field other than in a few gadget right. plays. So we'll hopefully find out soon, and you'll be able to, to adjust accordingly. Tight end Hayden Hurst, Ooh. who struggled all rookie season with injuries. Yeah. Well, he's struggling again. Hamstring injury for Ravens tight end Hayden Hurst. He put on extra weight this offseason to hopefully stave off some injuries, and Ooh. the first thing That's that what I tell my wife, too. Questionable for training <laughs> put camp, on by weight. the way. <laughs> for my, injuries? Yeah, my <laughs> weight is to prevent injury. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. You must not. <laughs> Get injured often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm nearly invincible <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Look, this is this is a big deal for Mark Andrews. We, I, who the, we all love. The three of us love Mark Andrews. If you look at the splits, once Lamar Jackson came in, Mark Andrews was actually pretty solid at at the tight end position. Now there were other things working with that, specifically Hayden Hurst, an injury to him, some other guys. So this this is a big deal for Mark Andrews' sleeper watch. I agree. I agree. I think he has a great opportunity. Camp reports are very positive. Jason's talked about that. He's part of our ultimate draft kit as a uh, just a candidate for breakout this season. Yes. A great opportunity at a position where, hey, if you've got a shot to get a great value late in the draft, those are the people that win. The ones that ended up with George Kittle early last year. Right. Not saying that Andrews is Kittle by any means, but very talented a player. Jar- a Jared Cook type. Yeah, right. You know, someone that you get super duper late, and it turns out he ends up being the number one target for the team. That that could happen. All right, news and notes today brought to you by the Sleeper app. As usual, download the free app, move your league over to a modern platform with infinite customizations. The mock draft is also brought to you by Sleeper. And before we jump into that mock draft, want to remind everybody we're two shows. So you know we're going to be three real soon. You want a fourth show? That is absolutely full of nonsense. Please check out our entertainment podcast, The Spitballers, wherever you listen. It's also on YouTube. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a grown man injure his knee from a seated, non-moving position? I, I know that Andy has. <laughs> because I have also seen it. And just we talk, we spitball about just ridiculous situations and we do fun entertainment drafts so please check it out spitballers i think podcast. The, the goal we're rebranding the monday we're, yes, we're, we're getting too. your monday off uh, on the right foot before the episode comes out on tuesday so check it out it's mock draft time gentlemen the fantasy footballers mock draft all right Jason said it. We're trying to put ourselves in a very interesting, precarious, scary position in this mock draft. It's a PPR mock, 12-team. It's also a three-wide receiver roster. 
So heavy, heavy PPR here. Yes. If you're going, which three a lot wide, of people play in. This is a very common yeah. uh, lineup, especially if you're in dynasty leagues. I see this m even more so in dynasty leagues. But the P full PPR, three wide receiver, two running back, and a flex. That is a very heavy wide receiver lineup. Yep. All right. So we are going to draft from the tenth position, making it all the more difficult. We're drafting together as a team. We'll talk about our decisions. You can contemplate them on your end. If you're on YouTube, you can see the draft board, and you'll have the opportunity to second-guess us every step of the way. Or celebrate, more than likely. <laughs> That's right, because we're going to take Sony Michelle in the first round, right? Ooh, that would He's be good a, in PPR. I, oh, yes. huge PPR threat. <laughs> Those seven catches would be worth seven points. James White wishes. Yeah. Yeah. He could catch like Sony Michelle. All right. Number one overall, Saquon. Two, McCaffrey. I get that in a PPR yep. for sure. Ezekiel Elliott goes three, David Johnson four. And then at number five, DeAndre Hopkins off the board. Alvin Kamara six, Devontae Adams seven, Melvin Gordon eight, Michael Thomas nine, and here we are. Yeah, and so nothing out of the ordinary. The clock. So far, I mean, no, I mean some rearrangement, yes. but the same names are off the board that you'd expect, right? Yes, exactly. And if I'm at the tenth pick, those, to me, those are the big running backs. I'm even going to include David Johnson in there just because mm -hmm. I, I things are trending in a very nice way for for him, especially for fantasy. But I'm not going to go with that second tier of running backs when Julio Jones is on the board in a PPR. Like this is, I don't really have to think or debate very much at all it would be close to a, a smash all right let julio me jones is in let me make the argument i guess because honestly i I'd probably lean towards julio here but the you know to to be the devil's advocate here and say okay how, how many we, we've got two of the next six picks being at right. the 10th and a 12 team league so julio is great odell beckham is great juju smith schuster is great I, like at wide receiver i'd be super happy with you know, one of those three guys. Also huge PPR guys in Antonio Brown and Keenan Allen are still sitting there as well. And then at running back, Joe Mixon, the aforementioned guy who would be my next running back up, I, I'm happy with. I'm still hesitant a little bit on Le'Veon Bell. I mean, he's great. I'm not saying he's going to be bad, but I'm not all in. I know James Conner could be great. Andy, you're not all in on James Conner. So, who, who, you know, Andy loves Dalvin Cook. Because yeah, you know, Lev, you, Lev Bell should catch a ton of passes in New York. He should. This should yes. not be. When you talk about James Conner or Dalvin Cook, you're probably hoping for 50 receptions, 60 receptions. When you talk about Lev Bell, you're hoping for 80 receptions. Correct. And that would be the difference here. And that you know, if, if he can put up a season like people. Some believe he can that we've seen before or something close to it in a PPR format. You're getting one of the few running backs that can catch the ball that many times. I just don't think his season will be anywhere close. I don't think his total yardage will be close to when he was a Steeler. Even if the PPR numbers are there? Yeah, I mean, yes. The, the It's fantastic to have that, that baseline If Julio wasn't in. on the clock here, I think it would make this a more interesting debate for me. But that I lean Julio. Yeah. In a, in a PPR, I lean Julio over Odell. Although I've I have been rising more and more on Odell Beckham Jr. I, he's just he's so ah. talented, and now with a great quarterback, I'm excited. I'm excited to see Odell this year. Well, we took uh, Julio Jones, and then four picks before our second round pick. They were Lev Bell went right uh, after Julio, as expected. Odell Beckham Jr. to finish the first round. Travis. Kelsey. Yeah. Sneaking up to the top of the second now. I was hoping he would fall to us so we could see what our team looks like if you're spending that second round pick on Kelsey in a three wide receiver. And that's really kind of the Don't get the chance. The motivation, the point of doing a mock draft. Um doing one in this format, getting a chance to experience uh experiment a little bit. Joe Mixon went after Travis Kelsey. So now we are back on the board. Obviously there are some powerhouse wide receiver options. I mean Juju Dropping into the second round here is interesting to me. Um, three wide receiver league makes me feel just fine going two wide receivers to open this draft. Other running backs, James Conner, Dalvin Cook, Gurley, who... <laughs> I, oh, I know. man. I mean, oh. look, he'll, he'll be targeted so a lot. Here's how wild things are with Todd Gurley currently. We are doing these eliminator drafts for the the charity fantasy cares 
And these leagues are they're wild, man. Where it's it's a best ball tournament, and you you put up the low score of the week, you are kicked out. Seventeen teams in these leagues. I got Todd Gurley at three ten, and I wasn't even sure I wanted to do it, but I but I took him. So twelve team, third pick of the second round. Yeah. We're bypassing on Todd Gurley right now. Apparently we are. Um, so here's the thing. I, I'm usually hesitant to start wide receiver, wide receiver, right? That's uh, Ugh, Can you pass Gurley here? Oh, man. I it's a tough decision for me. Gurley. Is it tough for you? It is. I mean, I've, I'm sitting here staring it down. I think the thing that dissuades me is, you know, we took a – man. I think what dissuades <laughs> me is having the extra starting position. Okay, mm -hmm. you've got the extra wide receiver position. The league is deep. It's a 12-team league with an extra starter, and uh, I've got we got a long wait here. And so, not having a, a sure thing, a locked and loaded guarantee at number two, having any of that risk, it it's it dissuades me. Yeah. So sure. uh, here in a mock, I would be personally fine trying out Juju Smith-Schuster. That's who I would take. Seeing if what happens receiver. if we go wide receiver, wide receiver. If we were to go running back between James Conner and Dalvin Cook. I would still lean on the James Conner side. Um, I know you would as well, Mike. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a tough decision between the two. Fortunately, we don't have to make it. Juju, Smith, Schuster off the board, making us the only team in this entire mock draft that went wide receiver, wide receiver to open the draft. Interesting. Uh, there were three teams, four teams, that went running back, running back. Um, in a we were the only two wide receiver in a three wide receiver starting league. In a full PPR, it is not inconceivable. I know right now in our consensus rankings, that is two of the top four wide receivers. Juju should be, you know, we, we talk about Julio as a PPR machine. Juju will have so many receptions this year, as safe as it comes. And if the touchdowns go up, you're talking about the, the upside of a number one. Yeah, I mean, great. The number one. Uh, best combination of wideouts, that's for sure. Connor, Gurley, Damian Williams. Three running backs off the board right after Juju and three more in this round. Um, after Antonio Brown, Dalvin Cook, Adam Thielen, Mike Evans, Leonard Fournette, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb, a, uh, an interesting PPR decision for people. Yeah, because he can catch the ball, sort of, but they, they don't feature him like that. I mean, you're expecting 30, 40, maybe 40 receptions for him, and you'd be happy. At least he's, one of the, be. he's one of the players that, for better or for worse, when, he, when his name is brought up in a dedicated PPR league, I definitely look at him different than yeah, he, I do in a half-point league. It feels like he should drop, yes. Oh, man. There were two running backs that I <laughs> that I really wanted to get to us here in that third round. Even though it's not a full – even though it is a full PPR, I still think a third-round Marlon Mack is good. And, of course, on Johnson, I expect him in a full PPR league to be battling for a running back one spot. And they were two of the three picks right ahead of us. Yeah, the third round went Cooper, Aaron Jones, another guy I was hoping would get to us. T.Y. Hilton, George Kittle, Devonta Freeman, Zach Ertz, Carrion Johnson, Keenan Allen, Marlon Mack. Is there any regret going Juju now that you see the next two rounds? Mm. When you see there were uh, an additional I, I, 10 I mean, running I, backs off the board. I guess so. Uh, we're, at, we're at the turn and just looking forward for this pick. To me, there are – only one pick that I – feel confident in taking really it. just one okay. at the running back position oh yeah i was but i'm sorry look, sorry yeah that's why i'm i'm looking i'm evaluating the wide receivers because there's three guys i love at this spot i'm still on team aj green uh until i hear further that like something something's going on with the the injury recovery if everything is smooth sailing for that i'm still very much on uh, that he can be an elite player julian edelman pretty Close. I mean, he doesn't have the upside of A.J. Green. And then Robert Woods is very close to that tier for me. I would prefer to get A.J. Green or Stephon Diggs, and we have four picks in between us. So let. So now I want to evaluate which running backs I'm willing to gamble. Yeah, I mean, look, there are so many valuable and value-wide receivers that I think we can pick up to help fill in the spots around Juju and Julio. So do I, you feel like they're, you, your pick at running back, you have a – a guy who is the left and he's a higher tier than everybody else. Yeah, right now you're staring down some some kind of interesting situations at running back. You've got guys like Derrick Henry and Mark Ingram on the board. 
both of which that I, you don't really expect to catch a ton of passes necessarily. You don't, you know, they're better standard running backs. Phillip Lindsay could be in an RBBC. David Montgomery's a rookie. Do you, you know, in a more complicated backfield than the guy that I would like to take, which is Josh Jacobs. He's sure. a rookie, but he's got a, an offense that has just been completely reconstructed pretty much from the ground up and has the whole backfield. So yeah, and, and he's, he's in a, PPR. I love the opportunity. I was going to That's say he's, he's known a for. great pass catching back. His his skill set there that you saw in Alabama. That's why he was a first round running back. Isaiah Crowell goes down, who was going to be splitting time with them. It's going to be the Josh Jacobs show. I am a hundred percent fine taking Josh Jacobs here. And if if you're sitting there going, man, this might be too high. Wait a couple weeks for Hard Knocks, <laughs> <laughs> and then as soon as that starts playing, Josh Jacobs is going to be going probably ahead of this spot personally and I know I know that I am on my own island here from you two but I think Kenya Drake here is also a very good pick he's a great pass catching back and in a full PPR you I'd, would take him here and not try and get him no, on no, the no. way back no 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 uh that's a great point that you bring this up Th this is where I might say look if I really want AJ Green or I really want Julian Edelman if there's one of those guys who to me Robert Woods is 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 ahead in my rankings and I want to grab one of them, then I think Kenyon will, will be there. Or you was can try it, to Wasn't one runs. of the torture things in one of those Saw movies where they made somebody have Kenyon Drake as their RB1 <laughs> in a league? Because that's how it would feel to me if I pass on another running back here Start him. and have to make Kenyon Drake of the Miami Dolphins my running back one. Start Kenyon. Yeah, it, I won't do it. You can just, I just would, uh, kill me. All right, I would take Jacobs here. Yeah, are we good? Oh, yeah. Can we do that? Because oh, yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Please, I've got somebody Jacobs, take I've Kenyon got Drake. Jacobs well Come on. ahead Come on, of Kenyon yes. Drake in my ranking. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes right after Josh Jacobs. A.J. Green, Stephon Diggs, Derrick Henry. This is where I think a tough decision comes oh, positionally it's not tough for, me. for us. Now, you, uh, it's not tough for you because you want to take Julian Edelman? That is 100% correct. So you want to go three out of the first four at uh, – Wide receiver position? Yeah. At this point for running backs, I'm looking for guys who they're going to catch the ball. So why Julian Edelman over the likes of Robert Woods? R Julian Edelman Brandon was – Brandon Cooks. Uh, let me – I can pull up the exact where he was. But Julian Edelman was – after he had returned from his suspension last year, was the wide receiver eight. And he he's he is the offense. Newly extended? Yeah, newly extended. This this is not. They think that so he much is, taller now. They pulled him. <laughs> they, they extended him out to what six four now? Is that right? Yeah, Brooks? they they got the San Francisco taffy machine that <laughs> that really works out those muscles. Just pull, just pull some. Yeah, he was the wide receiver eight in this offense. It's still going to run through Julian Edelman. They don't. They do not think that he is washed, and they're not moving on. From a reliability standpoint, someone might say, "Hey, look, Robert Woods is a better selection here. Great offense, Jason. You love Robert Woods. If you stare down Edelman and Woods, do you take Edelman? In a full PPR, I think I do take Edelman. I mean, uh, Robert Woods is ahead we are in, my in half, a full PPR in my half PPR rankings, but I think that the consistency, the fact that. You know, you, you had half of last year without Cooper Cup. I, I like both guys. I would be fine with either. And I, I agree that in a three-wide receiver flex league, I would go with a third wide receiver here because you're, you're looking at going, okay, do we take the running back because we feel we need a running back? Because, you know, we do. We've got one, and he's a rookie. But the running back is far less talented that we're going to be taking here if it's Kenya Drake or someone like that versus a top – you know, a, a, a wide receiver one quality player as our third wide receiver starter. I think there's part of me that is just curious what our running back core is going to look like later in the draft with such a commitment. It'll be in a fine. Full PPR. So we'll go with Edelman. That's fine. Julio Jones, Juju Smith Schuster, and Julian Edelman this is ridiculous. If Joe Mixon, I'm very happy. If right Joe now. Mixon could have slipped three picks, and we could have had him as our RB one instead of Josh Jacobs. He only needed to slip one pick, yeah. really. He was picked right. But right then we wouldn't have second. Juju. No, I said if he slipped into the third round, he went one after Juju. But if he one before Juju in the second, I believe. Yeah. Oh, he went. You're looking, okay, I'm sorry. I was looking <laughs> the wrong direction. You're absolutely right. Makes sense. Um, Follow the snake. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so we took Julian Edelman. Robert Woods went two picks later. Galladay off the board. Some other highlights of this round. Uh, Brandon Cooks went at the eighth pick. Kenyon Drake, see you later. 409. 
ahead of Philip Lindsay, ahead of David Montgomery. So, Jason, mm-hmm. other owners thinking like you did, incorrectly. Uh, Cooper Cup, <laughs> Tariq Cohen, Andrew Luck. You're ornery today. Tyler Lockett. Just burying. Well, because I don't like Drake? Yeah. Burying Drake. Yeah. I, I, look, I think he's a talented musician. Uh, I think he can call me on the Please cell phone. Please don't and make a gonna... cell phone joke. <laughs> Too late. Anything. <laughs> Too Anything. Late. It's, the only, it's the only Drake oh. reference he can pull out. All right, Tariq Cohen, interesting PPR player for sure. Probably a value there at 502. Andrew Luck and Aaron Rodgers go off the board in this round, and then some of the most difficult players to draft in a PPR league. When do you take a guy like Sony Michelle? When do you take a guy like Chris Carson? The... They both went here in the fifth round. And it's hard to kind of – how do you make that decision on players that you know are so not pass-centric running backs? I mean, look, I, I – you know, Marlon Mack is a little bit more uh, passable in the receiving game than these two, but I, I was fine for him in the third. I think sometimes players overdo – and that's not to say you shouldn't keep that in mind, but sometimes they overdo – the well this guy doesn't catch passes so I'm not going to draft him in a PPR league if he is like Chris Carson or like Sony has the opportunity to be a a heavy touchdown utilized big volume back I mean there's a value and honestly the fifth round here I think that's where they both belong all right here we are in the clock some decisions to be made we have three wideouts Juju Julio need more Julian Edelman while we are, um, we can put one in our flex. Did, did we intentionally go after guys whose names begin with the J U? Because we've got three of them. Oh no! Got Juju, got Julio, got Julian. You could have said just J because we got four guys. Yeah, all four and Jacobs. So but that James, now, James White, you're on the now team. we're locked in. We've been making a lot of money on Wheel of Fortune right James now. James White actually is a, a great pick here, but do you worry about any of the? I don't. I worry about Mike. Giving yeah. us, I worry pushback. about James White. Well, here, here's what you got to do. First of all, do you feel committed to a running back at this position? No, you don't. Well, that answers that question. But if you were looking at running backs, James White's still on the board, an absolute monster in the peep, in the receiving game, targeted what six, seven times a game by Tom Brady, and your other options at running back at this are point not good. Are not good at all. You got Lamar Miller, I guess. Uh, you take a chance on Rashad Penny. You're talking about an RB two here. Miles Sanders, another rookie, doesn't feel very good. In a full PPR I, league, I think James White is I think an he's extremely. A steal here. I think he's a steal. I think he's an extremely good player in full PPR leagues, and that's not look. If you go back to 2016 when he had the breakout year, he was a receiver, and he's he's a guy that's going to be up at that 80 plus catch mark, especially now this season. No Gronk, 87 receptions last year. Yeah, and, and, and I fully expect the the carry number to come down from last year, and I think the touchdown number that he had will come down as well. But he was the running back nine last year. I, I'm not expecting that, but to be in the uh, in the fifth round, the, the latter half of the fifth round, the real question then becomes a lot of times people won't take a James White because they took a Julian Edelman. They've got two Patriots. They don't want to stack the wide receiver running back. And personally, I don't have any problem with that. If – that player represents that next tier break. I mean, I you know, again, you you don't want to overdo it, but I think both players are good. I would be fine that route. Mike, I want to hear your counter argument to go James White here, either at the wide receiver or the tight end position. Tight end, full PPR, there are only a certain number of tight ends that are going to get a high volume. Do you think about going that direction with someone like Evan Ingram, who you like? Yeah, but for the tight ends, I mean, Hunter – Henry and Evan Ingram are both there, and I think that they can be higher volume. Evan Ingram, I lean towards him because it's there is the possibility that Evan Ingram is the second highest targeted player on that team, and that's behind Saquon Barkley. So it, I am not locked into James White. I I totally get the arguments for him. There's just the the regression that I think is going to hit James White is going to leave a lot of people very, very disappointed. Maybe but, less disappointed in a full PPR league. Certainly. Uh, certainly the, the full does. But the, the rest of these guys, you are, at the running back at least, you are doing a pray and spray with Tevin Coleman. That's how it feels. You hope that he is the guy. Rashad Penny, you 
we assume he's that pass catching role that that Mike Davis had last year and splitting carries. So that's kind of if I'm going to take a running back, I would probably take the chance on now, Rashad Penny. What about here. what about a you 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 lack the upside, but taking someone who is a little bit safer from a volume standpoint in Lamar Miller. He he's never yeah, somebody fair. that people are excited. To. I've never like this year been like yes. Didn't we didn't him. we end up with Josh Jacobs and Lamar Miller on one of our previous mocks? Or am I, I misremembering? Don't, I don't recall. Yeah, I don't remember what I have for breakfast, Andy. If you think <laughs> there's a chance that I know, we do mock a few times. I think every he year. was on your the head to head mock draft. Uh, he was on you mean your when squad. I drafted the Houston Texans? Yes. Yes. That uh, yeah, that was a unique strategy. <sighs> Yo, you listen to that one, Mike? No, I well, saw you the were results in, in the airport. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of time. At the wide receiver position, there's huge names that everybody oh, loves. This is one of the reasons why I thought maybe you want to take a running back that you like earlier because I just knew that there were going to be some of these guys we love. Mike Williams, Jason, Sammy Watkins, mm -hmm. Robbie Anderson, Chris Alshon Godwin. Jeffrey, Chris Godwin, DJ Moore, Dante Pettis. These are all – we're on our short wait. This is the fifth round. We make a pick. We wait four picks. We pick again. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be happy or, or I'm not going to be unhappy with any of these wideout options. My vote is James White, but I'm going to hand the pick to Mike. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I like putting Mike on the spot here. This is, this is why when you're – and this is something important, Foot Clan. When you're – like you should be mock drafting. Don't just listen to mock drafts. Go and do your own. It prepares you so well. And when you do it, don't just draft exactly who you're going to draft in the draft. In order to be water, as we stay, say, and, and know how to be flexible, you have to take guys that you wouldn't necessarily take at positions you wouldn't necessarily take to say, oh, yeah, you know what? If I'm at the 10 spot and I go three wide receivers out of my first four picks, I, I've got so many wide receivers I like in the fifth, sixth, seventh round and no running backs, and you, you learn that way. I am going to open the antibiotics – Pour it onto the to the uh, the applesauce because this is not a pill that you can swallow oh, in the fifth no. round. I'm taking Lamar Miller. Oh no! Well, I thought that was your whole analogy for taking James White, and I was oh, going to be never, happy. Oh, never, never. The thing about kind of looking back and saying, "Hey, there's a bunch of other wideouts that I like." I don't think that I feel any different about Lamar Miller or James White there than I would have felt about missing out on Ingram or Drake or Lindsey or Montgomery. So I don't think taking Edelman was the wrong choice there. I think the more interesting thing is we backed ourselves into that position by taking Julio and Juju. It was Juju. One, it was the, two. Yeah, yeah, it was the second round uh, bypassing. Could have taken Gurley. Gurley, James Conner. I'm very happy with this team. Yeah, okay. look, I, I – I like the stability of Miller and the carry count just just with the Josh Jacobs rookie. <laughs> yes. This nature. is one of those things where – this is a roster where at the end, I don't know that you're going to get the votes – but if you go into an actual fantasy football season with this roster, it's going to do – I think it's going to do very well. I had hoped that maybe James White would just slip back into this pick so we could just talk about him more and more. <laughs> Chris Godwin, Please. Sammy Watkins, James White, Tyler Boyd, the next four off the board, which means you you still got your Evan Ingram option. Ooh. I think he's very interesting here. That is very interesting. Because we have three wideouts, and I think he's very interesting as a PPR guy in uh, this format. Who are the, the remaining tight ends? Uh, you have Hunter, Hunter Henry. Henry, yeah, uh, Ebron, Cook. But I'm saying, so th after the Hunter Henry and Ingram, there is a pretty large tight end cliff. I mean, depending on your view on Eric Ebron, there's a there's a large cliff because it's Ebron, Cook, McDonald, and Joku. I, right. I definitely think there's a huge drop off. And personally, I would put Hunter Henry in the group with with Eric Ebron. Okay, you got Ingram above him. 100%. I think Ingram is the last guy in a tier where we know he's going to be heavily utilized in the passing game. So if we wanted to take Evan Ingram, I would have no problem with that. I find that I end up with him a lot in these middle rounds because he is that last tight end that I would enjoy having after a draft. And I go, oh, yeah, my tight end spot's locked and loaded. There are wide receivers I really like here. Mike that Williams. In a normal league, I would, I would be – hesitant to pass on for Evan Ingram. But Mike Williams is very much more of a standard league type of wideout. Um, even guys like Alshon Jeffrey, I think are going to fit that mold. Robbie Anderson, you know, these are not PPR monsters. These are big play touchdown type of players. That makes me more comfortable with Ingram. I'm curious what hmm. our roster looks like that way. I want to take Ingram. Uh, my counterpoint to what you were talking about is this is the guy who's going in our flex. So just 
perceptually how we're thinking about this player, I'm I would be very happy getting a guy who's like a Mike Williams. He's that big play. He's my he's my turbo button in the flex because I know that between Julio, Juju, and Julian. I mean, those guys are pulling in 30-plus receptions a week. I, but I see, the tur he's not the turbo button. He's the guy you start in place with Julian Edelman in week three <laughs> when Edelman goes down. <laughs> Get out of here. He's your wide receiver three. Oh. Get out of oh, here. Oh, history shame. of his career. Um, he plays more than three games. If if we are talking about that in the flex spot, and I, I, I'm i always fine to punt the tight end and wait and grab one later that maybe I'm not locked and loaded. I think Njoku can be interesting in a uh, – PPR I, format later man, on. I wish I did. But the wide receiver that, I mean, obviously I just brought him up very recently, the wide receiver that I like here, because there's a chance maybe he doesn't break out. But if he does, he's going to be an awesome, awesome player, not as PPR dependent as a Mike Williams, as Dante Pettis. The fact that he would be our fourth wide receiver, goodness. I mean, you've got a flex option that can that can grow. I, I'm kind of curious if Pettis makes it back to us. In the seventh round. Let's roll the dice. Are, we, are you willing to get on the Ingram train? Jason? I'm 100% willing to get on it, but I want it. There's no chance Dante Pettis gets back. Well, this is the long term. This is where How we're, many do we wait? 20 picks? Something like that. Yeah, he's not picks. coming back. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Ingram, we took him. Henry went next. Daryl Henderson, I Baker Mayfield. Mike Williams is gone. DJ Moore is gone. Oh, the wide receiver and running back. Come on, runs. Dante. Come he's on, Dante. Still not off the board. Oh, he's not off the board. Come on, Dante. Just a couple more picks. Oh, no. A few more. Oh, Dante Pettis, come on. Come on, baby. No! Oh! No! <laughs> he ends up going through two pick, uh, three picks ahead of us. I've never been so sad to be right. <laughs> oh, no, that's true. You, you're probably not that sad. But Baker, Mayfield, Deshaun, Watts, and Matt Ryan and Drew Brees all went off the board in that run. And all those wide receivers we love so much. Mike Williams, Dante Pettis. I'm more upset about the Robbie Anderson. Yeah, personally. Robbie Anderson's gone at 7.08, and so we are on the clock. We can do what we want, gentlemen. We can reinforce the running back position. I think that that is an option. You're looking at nah. some more risks here. Um, Latavius Murray, I don't think I want the Lamar Miller-Latavius Murray combination. Uh, Miles Sanders, Ronald Jones, Royce Freeman. If we're Man, looking, it's so, rough at running back. Yeah, at running back at this point of the draft, I would take the shot on Miles Sanders, who uh, we're, we're still pretty early on. You know, we're a couple months out from your your real fantasy drafts, unless you're doing best ball right now. But by preseason week three, Miles Sanders could be one of the biggest risers in all of average draft position. I would take him here too because I want to reinforce the running back position. We're still needing a flex. So you want to put yourself in a decent position there. Um, what I want to talk about. Go for it. Uh, a guy who I've loved the entire offseason, Geronimo Allison, wide receiver from the Green Bay Packers, who to me was, when they brought him back, not a huge contract, but they brought him back, and Aaron Rodgers frequently talks about Geronimo. I was I'm very ready. Now I'm a little hesitant with all of the news coming out that, Geronimo is going to move from the outside where he had a ton of success. Mm -hmm. He's going to move into the slot, and they're going to keep Marquez on the outside. I don't know. I don't know if you guys recently talked about this. Uh, I don't think we talked about. I mean, we've certainly talked about it off off air. I am rising on Marquez Valdez Scantling like crazy. I think it makes a lot of sense to move him to the outside and Geronimo to the slot. Now, do you think Geronimo can succeed? I mean, he's not a traditional. He can, he, he doesn't have the traditional body, but we've seen. Taller guys in the slot, it'd be an actual very good move for their I, career. I, I think this could be fine for him, especially in a in a PPR league. He'll be fine. But the upside that Geronimo showed in those four games last year, I think that completely moves over to MVS. But at this point, we don't need to draft either of those guys. I am not as hesitant as Andy is on Latavius Murray. But if push came to shove, I would draft Miles Sanders. So I think all three of By us the way, will. Okay. Will Fuller is on the board as well. I don't know if you, anybody saw this news today. The team exercised their fifth-year option, $10 oh, million oh, option, yeah. on Will Fuller for 2020. So confidence from the team, at least, that he's back from the injury, that he's going to be a part of this offense. Um, and he wants those Texans. Oh, uh, I did not <laughs> yeah. say draft Will Fuller. <laughs> Brooks, Miles Sanders it is. Miles Sanders off the board. Fuller went next. Latavius Murray is gone. Russell Wilson, Nikhil Harry. That could be a very interesting pick for somebody in a PPR league. Yeah, man, People don't, don't know what to do with Harry. No, Harry, and I'm one of them. It's a hard time. It's a hard time projecting rookies in 
New England and what kind of trust Tom Brady will have with you. At this point in his career, I don't think it's enough to just be an athletic freak for Tom Brady. You can't oh, just it's, run it's down the field. never been enough. Well, it, it's – sure. But if you have a, an athletic kind of uh, profile and you're running, you know, nines, that worked at one time for Tom. I don't think it works as much anymore. Yeah, I, I love Nikhil Harry as a prospect. Easily my number one wide receiver, uh, you know, before the draft. Then he goes to a great spot. I think he could dominate. And, you know, we talk about this uh, on the show. There are certain players you're just fine being wrong about, and I am fine. I, they're, I'm not getting Nikhil Harry in any draft this year because yeah, I'm with, with you. all of that said, in order to get off to a hot start to be able to be reliable, I just think the odds – there's too many factors that are against him as far as first half of the season success. I don't I don't really like When do you want him? Past the tenth round? If that happened? Yeah, I mean if if I'm taking him as like my last bench player, sure, but where he's being drafted, I I'm not gonna have that opportunity. Just to lay uh, a few things out there, you guys think about who you want at this pick, since we had the quick turn, we're back on the clock. I wanna mention Carson Wentz, Kyler Murray, Cam Newton. Those three wideouts are, are Quarterbacks are still on the board. Um, I think Wentz in the eighth, if, you, if you're if you out there, want him. I don't think the eighth round is the wrong place to pay for him. I'm a huge Carson Wentz believer this season. You're going to hear a lot more about him. Um, probably going to hear about him in New York City. <laughs> but I, I'm a believer, but I know, Jason, I know you love the value that Cam is representing later in drafts. Mike, I know you just talked about Kyler Murray and what he yeah. could represent for as a season-long starter. Those three guys are still there. Will they still be there when we come back? I don't know. I'm I don't look, know if you care. Well, looking at the draft board, eight teams have selected a quarterback so far. So that to me, in the eighth round, I'm not worried about one of these teams taking a second quarterback. Certainly they could and kind of start throwing a wrench into that plan. But there is, there is a running back who jumps out at me that I would go after. Hmm. And that's Austin Eckler. In a PPR, as your third, or I should say your fourth running back, I think that he is extremely interesting, giving you some standalone flex uh, flex appeal on a week-to-week -week basis. And then we, we know that if Melvin Gordon goes out, I guess we're not 100% sure that Justin Jackson doesn't come in and be the guy, but – more than likely, Austin Eckler would still receive the opportunity if Melvin is to miss time. It, it's so funny. We're here in the eighth round. LaShawn McCoy is on the is on the clock. Yeah. Is on is on the board. And he'll be there in the ninth round if he's, it's up to me. He's the starting running back, and he's you know been a career-dominant fantasy guy. And we're talking Austin Eckler over him. And here's the thing. I am not sitting here making the argument for LaShawn McCoy. I, he's just not even an option to me. And we're in the eighth round. I guess I'm bringing up, like, am I wrong to have that view of Shady at this point in a draft? No. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> and I, I would, count, I don't think Austin Eckler would be personally an option for me in the eighth round here, even oh, in a PPR. He is for me. Because I think what happened perceptually with Austin Eckler is he had, he had a run. He had, he, he had these spotty games, but he, only, he caught under 40 passes last year. That's not going to get it done in a PPR league if he repeats what he did last year. Mike, you've talked about Justin Jackson, a healthier Melvin Gordon. I think the risk is too high in the eighth. I wouldn't mind waiting to see, does he get to the ninth round? Does he get to the tenth round? I see names like Marvin Jones on the board right here in the eighth round, and I get interested. Even players, you know, Golden Tate in New York, totally ignored, barely talked about. You talked about, I mean, we took Evan Ingram already, so maybe we don't want to dip our toe into Golden Tate and that sweet offense. Oh, uh, it's going to be but, sweet. Give me all the Eli Manning. <laughs> but just speaking that, uh, talking about Golden Tate for a second in general is good because he could be very well and should be the number one targeted guy right. in New York. So he's somebody who maybe outside of an Ingram being drafted two ahead, I'd be looking at other players to think about. I want to make sure people know that they're out there. Um, all the other Texans left, Kiki QT and no, uh, Larry Fitzgerald still on the board. So when I, I also Arizona. miss, I also overlooked the fact that we only have three wide receivers. So right. I, I am selecting a wide receiver. here. I want Marvin Jones. That's perfectly fine with me. I think that Marvin Jones is, he's being overlooked because of the fantasy burns that he gave people in the breakout of Kenny Galladay. So I think the eighth round is too, 
low for him. Yeah, I, I'm 100% fine with Marvin Jones. Let's pick him here. I will say this is one of those situations where it's just worked out. I could see myself here. I usually don't even look at quarterback till the 10th round, but and that's really – that's not true. I look at it every round. This is where – an early eighth round pick, I actually consider it because, like you said, Carson I would have loved to say Carson Wentz or Cam yeah. Newton or even Kyler. Uh, and they're one all of those gone. guys could make it back. Just and kidding. None of them did. They're all gone. Carson Two Wentz, picks. Kyler Murray, and Cam Newton all gone between the eighth and ninth this round. This team, pick. this team eight. This is to get out of my face. This is where it gets tough for me on the late round quarterback decision making, because when I ha when I looked oh, at our right. roster, I really wanted them, but. There are other quality quarterbacks on the board yeah. still. Jared Goff is yeah, still Goff there. Jared Goff is still there. Um, Eckler went. Tenth pick of the eighth round. Uh, Golden Tate went. DK Metcalf off the board at 902 with all that Metcalf buzz. Royce Freeman, somebody I would have loved to see drop to us at the end of the ninth round here. We got to make the rest of these picks a little quicker. So, um, like Jason said... Pick. Jared Goff is there. Jason, you can have the pick. You can just just talk through it for a second and then make it. Sure thing. I Look, the, there is a, a tear break here to me at quarterback. I, I, I like I like Jameis. I like Phillip Rivers, Brady, Dak. They're all good. I'm fine. If there's a guy on the board right now at wide receiver or running back that I was like, man, if I was a Corey Davis truther, right? Corey Davis is on the board. And I'm like, I still believe. Then I'll, I'll, I'll take him because I've got backup plans with Dak. But when I look at the, the wide receivers that are out there, I like I like Larry Fitzgerald. I like D.D. Westbrook. I like a lot of these guys about the same to me. And and similar at running back, it, it, there's there's no one that's like, I have to have D D Damian Harris. I have to have uh, Adrian Peterson. So to me, I'm taking Jared Goff. And you shall. Jared Goff off the board, followed by four wideouts. Nicole Hardman, Corey Davis. Deshaun Jackson, Larry Fitzgerald. Oh. We're back on the board. Now, right now, we have three running backs. Yes. We have three picks left in this draft, by the way. We Josh only Jake did a four-man binge for the sake of time. Josh Jacobs, Lamar Miller, and Miles Sanders. We have four wide receivers, Julio Jones, Juju Smith-Schuster, Julian Edelman, and Marvin Jones. We've got our quarterback and tight end taken care of. So, at this point, we've got three picks. They're all going to be running backs or wide receivers here. And, uh, you know. I think running back is probably the place that we need the most you can, help with. You could certainly do worse than grabbing like a Peyton Barber or Adrian Peterson here this late in the draft, somebody that could step in as a starter. I think for me the pick is actually Kiki. I know I talk all about Texans only, uh, but he is such a PPR. Um, yes, he is. Sleeper, breakout, contender. Mike, um, I'm happy. You know, MVS. Oh, yes. MVS oh. is here. At ten oh three, um, oh, Tim Allen likes it. Mike, <laughs> I'll hand you the pick. Go for uh, it. Okay, so if if I'm up, then I'm actually taking uh, Kiki's rhythmical repetition partner, Didi. I am taking Didi because I think that Didi could Didi will be the number one wide receiver for we the. You're so close Jaguars. to putting Kiki, Didi, Juju together oh, on oh, one team. One oh. of these times, one of these did Kiki go? No, well, yes, oh, but I, yeah. I was watching for MVS. I oh, was sure. really hoping MVS got back to us. I think at this point when you've got such – like the way the, the roster construction, I love Didi as a PPR guy, yeah. but we've got four really good wide receivers uh, ahead of them right now, and so I would love a swing for the fences type of Marquez Valdez-Scantling pick where it's like he just breaks out. He's must start even over some of these great players. I think Didi would be a safe, solid flex option. It's good for depth, not a bad pick, but uh, I think MVS would have been perfect for this roster. Well, Jason, you can make our second last pick. I'll make the final pick. Tenth round steals. Uh, you know, Devin Singletary went off the board late. Look, yeah, looking um, at these running backs. Adrian Peterson went off the board late. James Washington, a shot at wideout in Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, go for I, it. So, looking at these running backs, I am going to. Uh, in general, in a vacuum, I really love Damian Harris here. I don't want to stack three rookies. I want a little bit more, uh, you know, cohesiveness. As far I had as to erase career. my guess Jason. because that's what you wrote down. You I ruined knew. everything. Yes. I was gonna, but blam! I was gonna present it like I knew the future. But I am going running back. You and ruined it. I th I think Peyton Barber here. It, look, the Peyton Barber Lamar Miller picks. Right. This is where when you take mm. a tight end, when you take three wide can receivers. I, can early, I talk you out of it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> We haven't, we haven't. I think you should take. I think you 
should take Naeem Hines for our team. That's what I believe. You think that should be my? I think you should okay, pick. Talk, I think you should properly it. pick Naeem Hines here for our team because Hines in a full PPR, great breakout ability, second to last pick in the draft. Looking at the waiver wire, looking at other options that you're going to have. Look, are you going to get a breakout from Peyton Barber in week one? Do you want to have him as a droppable candidate? Or do you want to see if Naeem Hines has something more in store in year two in an Andrew Luckett-led offense where he could be an 80 reception I, guy? I do. He think could be the Austin Eckler that we didn't get, and you could get him five rounds later. I think Paris Campbell eats into Naeem Hines quite a bit, so I worry, but I am 100% fine with trading this pick to you. Oh, for oh. the last pick? And you can take him, and then I get the next pick. Okay, that seems fair. I took Naeem Hines. Damian Harris went next. Peyton Barber, here we come. Dak Prescott. <laughs> um, we do have the final pick. Jason, it's all yours so, right now. Juju, Julio, Julian Edelman, Marvin Jones, D.D. Westbrook at wide receiver, Josh Jacobs, Lamar Miller, Miles Sanders, Naeem Hines at running back. Goff is our quarterback. Ingram, our tight end. Now, I, I do want to bring up – we talked about it on the footcast, but the quote from head coach Bruce Arians of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers – talking about his running back crew, these were not glowing comments. No one stood out. He essentially said, yeah, our running back crew is good okay. enough. <laughs> he said, just okay. Just okay. We don't have a Gurley. We don't have a, uh, a David, David Johnson. Johnson. But you don't need to have one to win. And f So for anyone looking for your Ronald Jones hype, the Peyton Barber could 100% be the starting running back and the the predominant running back on this team yet yet again. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's almost likely that he is not in the long term, but for this year they didn't address the position. I don't believe Ronald Jones has what it takes to completely win over that job. So Peyton Barber is probably the pick. Um, the you know the only other guy that I question here because I know right now we are, are Matt Breed is still on the board as well. I already traded you my pick, Andy. No, I just letting you know. No, I appreciate it. I wonder who he plays for uh, in 2019. <laughs> so um, I would throw out Dante Moncrief here as a oh. as a super late oh. awesome pick. Careful, because we went <laughs> Moncrief. She um, said maybe. <laughs> yes, because we because we did that now. I'm going to go running back. I think our team would be better the way we constructed it with big, heavy-hitting wide receivers earlier. I want another shot at just making sure that we're okay at that position. The only other name I will bring up is Chris Thompson. Okay. In a, okay. In a full PPR league, Chris Thompson is the forgotten man in Washington. He is always injured, as yes. apparently all Redskins are, yes. unfortunately. But when he plays, he is a dominant PPR player. He is in this system. He makes me more excited he's than Peyton Barber. He's in the system like we are allowed to draft him? You know, he's, in, he's in a system he succeeded uh. in. He's in, he's in Gruden's system that he has already found success. He knows it well. He's not a rookie coming in. That, Do you know you how know, many targets like he had Love. last year, Jay? <laughs> last year while he was injured? Yeah. Tell me. 55. What? <laughs> 55! Oh! All right, let's say Chris Thompson. <laughs> I think he's... <laughs> because he had 55 targets. That's how you make your last selection. He, here's what I will gentlemen. say: at least my prerequisite for the final couple picks is I want to know in the first couple weeks of the year what's going on with that player. I don't want somebody I'm gonna have to wait half the season to figure out if week one Chris Thompson targeted ten times. It's a possibility. That's in the the realm of possibility yes. for sure. Uh, they they do have a clogged up backfield on a team I'm unsure of, but why not? Well, the nice thing is their wide receiver, the the the, the, the players who are going, are going to be receiving the ball, is such a question mark that Chris Thompson could actually become a reliable asset for whoever the quarterback is there. All right. Well, would you? How do you feel? How do you feel about the team? Obviously, the wide receivers we're not going to have issues at that position, uh, sans injury. But do you feel good enough in a full PPR, 12-team league, three wide outs starting, to have Josh Jacobs, Lamar Miller, and Miles Sanders as, as your top running backs? That's the real question. I think because you are three wide receiver plus a flex, and you've got Juju, you've got Julio, you've got Edelman, Marvin Jones, D.D. Westbrook. And it's locked up. I, yeah. like, I feel great about the wide receiver positions. With, so I feel – You'd be investing that waiver exactly. attention, I feel, the waiver attention. I feel good enough with our running backs exiting the draft, but I feel great with the wide receivers, which means week one, 
I'm taking a shot at finding the running back. Week two, I'm going to be trying to find the running back because with those, with those four guys, four to five guys leading our wide receiver crew, it's – it's going to be tough to find a wide receiver off the waiver wire who all the, of a sudden they're playing ahead of these guys. Right. Yeah, and obviously, you know. And I love our quarterback tight end. The quarterback was a steal. Value-wise, Evan Ingram, a lot of upside at tight end. I feel pretty good about this. Yeah, I like it. And that's even with giving you guys tons of the picks. I mean, yeah. just imagine. We did it. <laughs> just imagine. Christine. What it could have been if what it wasn't it the only team. Yeah. We could have had four more Texans. I was going to say, <laughs> don't imagine. Just go back a couple episodes and see what disaster turned out. Have you been watching a lot of Friday Night Lights? Oh, I got the, you got the twang? No, you just, I mean, high school football. Yeah. Big in Texas. Pristine deal of the day. Devontae Adams signed Green Bay Packers jersey. JSA witnessed authentic autograph. $71.37. Since, guys, Devonte Adams is going to be really good this year. I was going to say you don't. He's have to going to be really good. Put these guys in order: Devonte Adams, MBS, <laughs> Geronimo, Geronimo Allison. Allison. Sure, I think you just did. Yeah, I think I did. But I think well. it's more like Devonte Adams. Dot dot dot. It's like four tier. Like we do the tier rankings. It's almost it's tier like one. You guys have written off Jimmy Graham, MBS. I was continuing. Geronimo. Oh wait, you were still. That was delayed. just my pause. So you have you have officially made the switch. I have a made. I have officially I have made the switch. Yes. Okay. Um, I think I have too, Mike. PristineAuction.com. Use the promo code Ballers when you sign up. You get five bucks towards your first sports memorabilia purchase on PristineAuction.com. That is it for today's episode. Look forward to seeing all of you in New York City on Saturday. That show will be live as a podcast on Tuesday and on YouTube on Tuesday as well. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. And Foot Clan, do not forget, if you need a, a championship ring because you dominated last year oh. or a trophy because you're so awesome, oh. you go to FantasyChamps.com. You can use the promo code BALLERS. Look, they have the best trophies imaginable. They even have new ones this year. So go check them out, and you can even get draft boards for your upcoming draft this season. Check it out at FantasyChamps.com.